Ford S Max 2015 present. Many years ago, there was a car advert with the line, big yet agile. You don't see that very often. In the MPV world, agility has been almost unheard of over the years, unless of course you're looking at the Ford S Max. Since the launch, the S Max has been a huge success. Even if the SUV has risen to such heights over the years, that MPVs are no longer the first tool of choice for those looking for a practical family holdall. The first generation of the S Max ran from 2006 to 2015 and was much admired. The second generation model replaced in 2015 and has since enjoyed similar adulation. The appeal of the S Max is that you are getting the best of both worlds, a car that straddles the line between practical family MPV and more fun to drive regular hatchback. It's also desirable to those who haven't quite given it to the idea of jumping onto the SUV, SUV bandwagon, but want something with a bit more street cred than a Ford Galaxy or Volkswagen Chiron. Engines have included a 1.5-liter and 2-liter turbocharged petrol unit. Diesels include a 2-liter in 118bhp, 148bhp, 178bhp and 207bhp versions. The 178bhp version was later upped to 188bhp and became the 2.0 TDI 190. Four-wheel drive and automatic gearboxes are also available on certain models. Trims have varied slightly over the years, having been updated to offer more glam in the showroom. There are basically three trim levels to choose from. The entry-level Z-Tech models come with 17-inch alloys, Sync 3 with 8-inch touchscreen infotainment, parking sensors, sports seats, and the DAB radio. Upgrading to the titanium trims gets you Ford's sat-nav system, auto wipers and lights, traffic sign recognition and cruise control, while the titanium sport gets a sportier body kit, rear spoiler and sports suspension including heated front seats. Seek out an S Max in the big nail trim and you will find numerous pearlescent paint jobs, lots of chrome, 18-inch bespoke alloys and acoustic glass, while inside owners will be greeted by full leather upholstery, electric seat adjustment, rear view camera and Sony's infotainment stereo system. Why has it been so popular? Well, handling is an S Max strong point. It doesn't wallow through corners and grip levels are high. You might fear that all this handling balance comes at the expense of ride quality, but it doesn't, thanks to S Max's impeccably controlled damping. The engines are refined too, and the steering is nice and accurate. It's a good car to drive, and not just for an MPV. Its interior design is a bit plain, with a few too many small buttons, and its infotainment system takes some getting used to, in part due to its confusing submenus. The seat Alhambra has clear dash design. You also get sliding rear doors with Alhambra, making it easier to put people in it if you happen to be parked up in a particularly tight car park space. The other downside to the S Max's relatively sporty looks is a slightly compromised third row of seats. This is because of the reduction in the roof height and a bit to drive it a sloping roof line. This will only be a problem if you regularly put taller people back there or need to carry luggage for five as part of your family holiday. But if this is the case, there is always the Galaxy to consider. Rivals have been quick to catch up with the S Max since its introduction, but if you are in the market for a used MPV with a bit of flair, there is plenty to recommend it. Despite the generally durable nature of the Ford S Max, it is still worthwhile checking the interior for any rips, tears or stains in the upholstery. These cars tend to be bought by families and private hire taxi firms, so it's possible that many different people have sat in its seats, possibly those who don't care as much about the car as you do. Check all the cupboards to make sure the lids covering them work as they should. The seats should slide backwards and forwards just as easily as they did when new. Then check the rear bumper, because suitcases may have been simply dragged out of the load area, dropping down onto the top of the bumper and potentially damaging it. Also check the alloy wheels for scrapes caused by drivers who parked or indeed pulled up too close to the curb. In 2016, a recall was issued that covered early Ford S Maxes fitted with adaptive LED headlights. There could be a software error that means the headlights might switch off. The vehicles that could be affected should have received a software update to prevent this from happening. However, it is worth checking this with a Ford dealer to make sure this has been carried out, and also check the remedial work has been carried out on the following recalls. 
Unfortunately, there was enough data in our latest vodka reliability survey to include many of the current crop of MPVs including the S-MAX. However, in previous surveys, the S-MAX and its smaller siblings, the C-MAX and the Grand C-MAX, have scored highly in their class. Ford as a brand ranked in 28th place out of 30 manufacturers featured a surprisingly disappointing performance. The 2.0 TDCI 150 is all the engine you really need for the Ford S Max, because it has enough power even with 7 people abroad, and you don't pay a horrendous amount to run it. The more powerful 180 and 210 2-liter diesels add a bit of useful extra oomph, but realistically, you won't need that, unless you plan to tow a caravan or trailer on a regular basis. Zetek gets plenty of standard equipment, with Bluetooth, dual-zone climate control, four electric windows, and front and rear parking sensors. Our favorite Ford S Max 2.0 TDCI 150 Zetek.